Kirk said, on the floor if you want, that's fine. Sure. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. We come rejoicing into this house of the Lord for this celebration, dear brothers and sisters, and now we stand with Macy and Trey on the day they intend to form a home of their own. For them, this is a moment of unique importance. So let us support them with our affection, with our friendship, and with our prayer as their brothers and sisters. Let us listen attentively with them to the word that God speaks to us today. Then with Holy Church, let us humbly pray to God the Father through Christ our Lord, for this couple, his servants, that he lovingly accept them, bless them, and make them always one. Let us pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness, pour out your grace on these, your servants, Macy and Trey, that coming together before your altar, they may be confirmed in love for one another. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite all to please be seated as we listen to the word of God. And I invite our first reader to please come forward. A reading from the book of Tobit. On their wedding night, Tobiah arose from bed and said to his wife, Sister, get up. Let us pray and beg our Lord to have mercy on us and to grant us deliverance. Sarah got up and they started to pray and beg the deliverance might be theirs. They began with these words, Blessed are you, O God of our fathers, Praise be your name forever and ever. Let the heavens and all your creation praise you forever. You made Adam and you gave him his wife Eve to be his help and support. And from these two, the human race descended. You said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Let us make him a partner like himself. Now, Lord, you know that I take this wife of mine not because of lust but for a noble purpose. Call down your mercy on me and on her and allow us to live together to a happy old age. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Does he deal with us, nor 
nor does he require us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. As a father, he has compassion on his children. So the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he has loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite all to please stand. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, to go and bear fruit, fruit which will remain. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Why don't you please be seated? Well, today we come together in this sacred place to witness a joining together of two wonderful persons, two lives into one new and sacred union. In a few moments, we will witness Macy and Trey giving themselves totally to each other for the rest of their lives in complete fidelity. They will freely consent to their vows to surrender their whole lives to each other as entire persons, body and soul. 
And you know, in so doing, a third person will join them. We won't necessarily physically see that third person, but this person is nonetheless real. In fact, this person is the reason why we've come together at this holy altar in this sacred church as opposed to a more secular setting to witness the beginning of this holy union of marriage. This third person is, of course, God, the one who created both Macy and Trey at the beginning of their existence in this world. God the one who has sustained the lives of both Macy and Trey for all these years and has led them to this day. For a man and a woman to really be married makes no sense without reference to God, in whose presence we are standing at this moment at this holy altar. In fact, what Macy and Trey are about to do is something pretty astonishing. They are about to do what every couple has a privilege and a responsibility of doing when they respond to God's call to enter the married life. They're about to bring into our midst the very presence and life of none other than God himself. Think about that. They're about to make visible something of the invisible God. They will do this today when they exchange their vows to give each totally to the other. And they will continue to do this throughout their married life, especially each time they renew their married vows when they show their love for each other as husband and wife. That's pretty amazing, but it's true. Exactly how will Macy and Trey bring into our midst this very presence of God? Well, stop to think about this amazing truth. When Macy and Trey exchanged their vows in a couple of moments, by which they will surrender their entire bodies, minds, hearts, and souls to each other. They will be participating in the very act of total self-giving that God himself chose to do and to offer at the very beginning of creation. Stop and think about it. God totally offered, and he didn't have to create the universe at all, but yet he did, because he wanted us humans with whom to have a relationship and give himself totally to. And so Macy and Trey will be doing that very same thing in imitation of God. We believe, after all, in a God who is not simply transcendent, but a God who also desires to be in relation. And so he created us humans to whom he could offer himself completely in love. And you know, even when we humans wandered away and sinned, God offered himself to us even further by coming to us as Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to suffer and die on the cross to save us, to surrender himself to us for our salvation out of pure love. And so it is that Macy and Trey are also about to surrender themselves to each other, just as Jesus surrendered himself totally out of love on that holy cross. Total self-giving, body and soul. And that's what true love really is, as we just heard in our gospel Bible reading just now, laying one's life down for one's friends, total giving to oneself and sacrifice for the good of another. That's what true love is, total giving oneself to the other despite the cost. That's the kind of divine love that marriage calls persons to. Total self-giving, body and soul, holding nothing back. A very different kind of love, a much more courageous and committed love from the so-called love of mere passing emotional feelings that our culture promotes. So what power, what dignity, Macy and Trey will soon enjoy as they enter a marriage which will make present for all to see the self-emptying, sacrificial, yet joyful and life-giving love of God and of Jesus Christ, for all to see. Something, again, pretty amazing, pretty astonishing. Of course, this kind of love will not always be easy, as Jesus' death on the cross was not easy. But that is why it is essential for all married couples to rely on God, to pray every day for the help the strength, the courage to persevere even in the midst of inevitable challenges 
and trials. God, that third person uniting himself to Macy and Trey today, is so generous in offering help to those who ask. Help in honoring the marital commitment again as permanent, faithful, and open to whatever new life God has in mind to bless this union. So as we stand on the threshold of this holy and sacred encounter with God the Almighty, we pray for Macy and Trey. We pray that the commitment they're about to make will be blessed with the help of God. And that their life together with all of its joys and challenges will, will enable them to become more holy, more like God. For holiness is actually the real goal for each of us as God's creation. We're meant for something more than simply what this world offers. We're meant for holiness, happiness, ultimately heaven. We pray that their married life together will be a preparation for that day when we pray they will reach their destination, the end, the finish line, the end zone, heaven, where they will be in full union for all eternity. In indescribable happiness and peace, with the God who created them in such great love, that divine love, that in just a couple of moments, they'll have the dignity of making present for all of us and all the world to behold. And this time I invite the wedding party to take its place. For dearly beloved, we have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord by a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other, and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. So Macy and Trey, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. Trey, do you take Macy for your lawful wife to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until death? Do you part? Macy, do you take Trey for your lawful husband to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, until death do you part? May the Lord in this kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Amen. I'll just hold on. Repeat after me. Macy received this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Good job. Good job. Trey received this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good job. You're an expert at this. All that together. Lord God, we pray that as Macy and Trey hold this crucifix, that they see in it a great sign of the total self-giving of the love that they're called to give to each other. Help them in the joys and challenges of the life to come. And we ask you to help them to always gain strength in their relationship with Jesus as Lord and Savior, especially in the Holy Eucharist. And may Almighty God bless this crucifix, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In this time, I invite the wedding party to return to your seats. And, and you can still face me. And at this time, we have the opportunity to offer some general intercessions into the hands of the Lord for all of our needs, petitions, and concerns. And at this time, I invite all to please stand. And let us pray to the Lord for Macy and Trey, who come to God's altar at the beginning of their married life so that they may always be united in love for each other. Let us pray also for the needs of our families, communities, and our world. And the response to each of these petitions is, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who minister within the church and in all Christian communities, that they may lead us to a deeper faith in Jesus Christ and a stronger love for others, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all married persons, that they will be faithful to God and to each other and draw from the power and of Jesus Christ and the help of the Holy Spirit to overcome difficulties and trials, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater respect for the, the relationship of marriage in our culture, so that all may see marriage as a reflection of the love of God for all humanity and of Jesus for his church, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those currently preparing for marriage, that they may do so in chastity and virtue, guided by a desire for holiness, and even more like Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For Macy and Trey, that they will always give God first place in their lives, they'll always enjoy the support of family and friends in their new life together, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And now in their course, we have that third person with us, God, through his son, Jesus. We pray the words he himself taught us together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, Amen. And we have now the nuptial blessing, which is a beautiful blessing that places Macy and Trey's marriage 
but of the whole context of God's creation and salvation history. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, you formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two, but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man, and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants, joined together in marriage, and grant who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit and pour your love into their hearts that they may remain faithful to the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter, Macy. And let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband entrust his heart to her so that acknowledging her as his equal, and as joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments, made one in the flesh. May they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all, May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children. And grant that reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we come to the final solemn blessing before we depart. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the Lord Jesus, who graced the marriage of Cana by his presence, bless you and your loved ones. Amen. May he who loved the church of the end unceasingly pour his love into your hearts. Amen. May the Lord grant that bearing witness to faith in his resurrection, you may await with joy the blessed hope to come. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here today, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The celebration has ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Well, it's my privilege now to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Trey and Macy Elkert.